Welcome to Food Stories. The show that gives you the story behind some of the world's most popular and beloved food. We'll also serve you with simple recipes, fun facts, and tips in cooking and preparing these food favorites. So what are you waiting for? Let's delve deeper as we tickle your brains and taste buds. This is Food Stories. Muesli Muesli is a dish that is based on raw rolled oats that is mixed with a variety of ingredients like fruit, seeds, nuts, milk, yogurt, or juice. It was originally invented by Swiss physician Maximilian Bircher Banner in 1900 as a dish for patients in his hospital. The food was conceived because Banner wanted to serve a dish that is rich in fruit and vegetables to promote a healthy diet for patients. He based his muesli on a similar dish that he had while hiking in the Swiss Alps. Banner doesn't really remember what the dish was called. Instead, he simply referred to it as the spice or the dish in Swiss. The word muesli was actually a shortened version of Bircher muesli, which was what Banner called it. It was based on the alemanic diminutive of mousse, which means pure or mash. In the 1960s, muesli became a popular dish in the Western world. This was due to the continuing trend of health food and vegetarian diets. Today, muesli can be bought at stores already mixed and packed, although other people prefer to make it themselves. There really is no strict recipe behind it. For today, let's try out the simple muesli recipe that is based on the original one Banner made. You will need two apples, one half cup walnuts, one half cup almonds, one tablespoon rolled oats, soaked in water for 12 hours prior to preparation, half a lemon, one tablespoon condensed milk. First, take your soaked oats and mix them in with the condensed milk. Then, squeeze in the lemon juice from the lemon slice, then mix well. While mixing, break the apples into the oat mixture. When everything is done, add in the grains, then mix thoroughly, and serve right away. Banner's idea was to serve muesli freshly made every time. Tip! Don't let the recipe discourage you from adding in your favorite fruit and grains. Try to mix and match and see what you like best. Depending on your area and the availability of fruits, why not try making a different type of muesli for every season? Chutney Chutney is a South Asian type of condiment that is made from a variable mixture of spices, vegetables, and fruit. The ingredients and type of preparation varies from region to region, with each having their own distinct flavor. The first chutney dates to about 500 BC, where simple spice preserves very similar to pickled foods were made from spices and fruits. The word itself is derived from the Hindi term chutney, which means to lick. In India, the term chutney both encompasses pickled and fresh food preparations. Chutney was brought to the attention of the West when the British colonized the Indian subcontinent during the 17th century. Since older-style chutney was primarily made as preserves, 
the Royal Navy adopted it for its long shelf life. In the 19th century, Major Gray's and Bengal Club brand started to manufacture chutney that is more suited to the Western flavor palette. Some cuisines like Caribbean and South American have adopted and regionalized their own chutney as popular condiments for meat dishes. Want to try making chutney at home? Here's how. You will need four red onions, six tomatoes, one red chili, five tablespoons red wine vinegar, one cup brown sugar. You will also need a jar, clean and sterile. To start, take your onions and tomatoes and chop them finely. Set these aside. Next, take your red chili and remove the seeds, then proceed to chop it finely as well. After that, heat a pan at low, then put all the ingredients together. Stir them well and let simmer for about 30 to 40 minutes. You should have a jammy consistency. Once that's done, take a clean and sterilized jar and place the chutney mix, then let it cool. Your chutney is now ready to eat. You can also place the chutney in the fridge and it should last for about four weeks. Fun fact, some types of chutney were used as medicine. The British Royal Navy would bring them a type of lime pickle chutney which the sailors used as source of vitamin C to ward off scurvy. Soda. A soda is a beverage that is made from a base of carbonated water, combined with a sweetener and some artificial and natural flavoring. Soda is the shortened term for soft drink, which is a term that meant non-alcoholic beverage and was used to contrast with the term hard drinks or alcoholic drinks. The creation of the soda was primarily inspired by the development of early fruit-flavored drinks that were popular in England during the 16th century. In 1767, Englishman Joseph Priestley discovered a method for infusing carbon dioxide to water which resulted into carbonated water, the base ingredient of the sodas today. In the 1900s, the popularity of the soda soared, turning soda companies into worldwide multi-billion dollar industries. In 2012, the combined net worth of the two biggest soda companies, Coca-Cola and Pepsi, was estimated to be about $100 billion. Here's a simple soda recipe you can try at home. You will need grated zest from two medium oranges, grated zest from one large lime, grated zest from one large lemon, one eighth teaspoon cinnamon, one eighth teaspoon nutmeg, one star anise pod crushed, two cups water, two teaspoons minced ginger, 1 teaspoon vanilla flavoring, 1 fourth teaspoon citric acid, 2 cups sugar, a bottle of soda water. First, take a large pan and bring 2 cups of water to a boil. Then, add in the zests, cinnamon, nutmeg, star anise, ginger, vanilla, and citric acid. Reduce the heat, then simmer for 20 minutes. Next, Take the sugar and place it in a bowl. Take your cola mixture and place it on a strainer. Drain the liquid and mix it in with the sugar. Use a spoon to squeeze out the extra juices from the boiled zest. Mix the solution thoroughly until the sugar is dissolved. Let the mixture cool, then chill in the fridge. To make cola soda, mix 1 4th cup of the cola syrup with 1 cup cold soda water. Fun fact, the famous Coca-Cola company not only produces Coke, but also a bevy of other soda brands. 
Internationally, the company owns at least 3,500 different soda brands. Crumpets A crumpet is a griddle cake that is made from a combination of flour and yeast. It is primarily an Anglo-Saxon invented food. The crumpet can trace its origins to the various European flat cakes that were produced in the 1600s. Its name can be traced to the Breton term Krampos or the Welsh Krampok. Originally, crumpets were made from a mixture of buckwheat, flour, eggs, and baking powder and looked very similar to pancakes. The crumpets we know today were actually started in the Victorian era with the introduction of yeast. These new type of crumpets were cooked in a ring mold and has the distinction of a more spongy and whole laden texture because of the additional baking powder. Generally, crumpets measure roughly 8 cm or 3 inch in diameter and has a thickness of 2 cm or 0.8 inches. Most crumpets are still cooked on a stovetop or a griddle, but store-bought crumpets are a popular alternative as well. If you fancy trying out crumpets at home, check out this simple recipe. You will need 2.5 cups warm milk, 1 teaspoon sugar, 2 teaspoons active dry yeast, 2 and 2 thirds cup of all-purpose flour, 1 teaspoon salt, 1 and 1 half teaspoons baking soda, butter. First, take a large mixing bowl and combine the milk and sugar. When done, sprinkle the yeast on the top and let it sit for 10 minutes. In another bowl, combine the flour, salt, and baking soda. Combine the dry ingredients with the milk mixture and mix properly. Cover the batter and let it rise for an hour. Next, take a pan and place it at medium heat. Melt some butter and place the ring mold on top of your pan. Pour in the batter, about a third of the height of the mold. You'll notice bubbles form on top of your crumpet. Cook the crumpet for about 3 to 4 minutes. Then turn on its side and cook till slightly browned. Serve hot. You can enjoy it on its own, or serve it with jam or syrup. Fun Fact In Australia, a slang phrase goes, not worth a crumpet, which means something or someone that is utterly useless. Marinades Marinades are a liquid flavor solution where food is immersed to acquire taste and flavor. It is usually made with a liquid base containing oils, spices, and herbs. The marination process not only flavors food, but also provides a way to tenderize tougher cuts of meat. Sometimes, the process takes a few minutes or even lasts days depending on the recipe. The term marinade traces its origins from the Latin aqua marina or brine, which is used in the pickling process, the very same technique where marination is based on. Liquids in the marinade can either be acidic, like vinegar or lemon juice, or enzymatic, like pineapple or papaya. There probably isn't any one culture responsible for the marinade as various world histories would show different people utilizing similar food immersion methods, albeit with different ingredients and flavors. The Chinese have been using soy sauce both as a condiment and marinade for almost 3,000 years. Early French and Italian cuisine have used brine and pickling techniques to flavor food for the last few centuries. Even pre-colonial Mexico shows evidence that meats were cooked with traces of fruit enzymes. 
Today, various name brands have made a name for themselves by creating and marketing their signature marinade mixes. Here's how you can make a tasty marinade at home that's quick and easy to prepare. You will need three tablespoons soy sauce, two cloves garlic, crushed, one half teaspoon white pepper, three tablespoons honey, and three tablespoons water. To start, take all of your ingredients and combine them in a bowl. Keep stirring until the honey is completely dissolved. Once that's done, you can place the marinade in a shallow dish or a Ziploc bag along with the meat. If you're in a hurry to cook the meat, give the marinade at least an hour to sit with the meat. The longer you let it sit, the more flavorful your meat will turn out. When marinating for more than an hour, place the marinade in the fridge to inhibit bacterial growth. When ready, take out the meat and cook. Tip! Do not consume leftover marinades as a sauce or dip unless they are properly cooked first. Raw meats may contain harmful bacteria which may contaminate your food if not handled properly. If you want to use marinade as a sauce, it's best to keep a fresh batch separate from the one you are using. Meatballs A meatball is ground or minced meat that is shaped into a ball when cooked. It is often combined with other ingredients like breadcrumbs, spices, and seasonings. The meatball is usually bound together by a binding ingredient which is usually eggs. The first written recipes for meatball-type foods comes in the Roman cookbook Apicius from the 4th century. Another early source of meatball-type recipes can be found in ancient Arabic texts. Early versions of these Middle Eastern meatballs were made of lamb meat, which was glazed with eggs and saffron. This early meatball would go on and become a basis for many of Arabic meat dishes. In China, an early type of meatball called Shi Shi Wan Shi, or Four Joy Meatballs, were developed around 200 BC, during the Xin Dynasty. Most South Asian regions enjoy their own version of meatballs, which is called kofta, derived from the Persian term kufta, which means to beat or to grind. Today, the term meatball is even extended to include meatless, vegetarian, and fish versions of the meatball. The list goes on. Most meat-consuming cultures have their own unique meatball recipe. Check out this simple meatball recipe. You will need a pound or about one half kilograms ground beef, one large egg, one fourth cup onion finely chopped, one third cup breadcrumbs, one fourth cup milk, one teaspoon Worcestershire sauce, salt to taste, and fresh ground black pepper to taste. Start by mixing the beef egg, onion, breadcrumbs, milk, Worcestershire sauce, salt, and pepper to form a meat paste. Measure about two tablespoons of the meat paste and form into a ball. Place the meatballs in a greased pan and bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius for 20 to 25 minutes. Once that's done, drain off the excess fat, then serve. Fun fact! The spaghetti and meatballs were Italian food items that were brought to America by Italian immigrants. They used to be separate menu items. But restaurant owners realized that people kept ordering them both at the same time. So they later on combined them to form one dish. Christmas Pudding The Christmas Pudding is a traditional English dessert usually eaten during Christmas. 
It is made from a mixture of dried fruits, eggs, spices, and sweeteners. Sometimes, it is also infused with liquor, such as brandy. Alcohol-infused Christmas pudding is usually stored for many months after Christmas and is reserved for special occasions. The alcohol allows the food to be preserved for many months. There is a popular story behind the tradition that dates back to medieval England. According to tradition, pudding should be made on the 25th Sunday after Trinity. The pudding should also be prepared with 13 ingredients to represent Christ and the 12 apostles. Another part of the tradition also states that each member of the family take turns while stirring the pudding and make a Christmas wish. This tradition harkens back to 14th to 15th century England. The idea spread through other parts of the world when British colonists took the tradition with them. You can try out the simple non-alcoholic Christmas pudding recipe that is fast and very convenient. You will need 1 half cup butter 1 half cup brown sugar 2 eggs 2 teaspoons golden syrup 1 cup dried mixed fruit 2 apples sliced 1 half cup plain flour 1 half teaspoon ground cinnamon 1 4 teaspoon ground nutmeg 1 4 teaspoon ground ginger and 1 3rd cup stale breadcrumbs. You will also need a 1.5 liter or 6 cup capacity microwave safe bowl. Start by lightly greasing your bowl. In a separate bowl, combine the butter and sugar with eggs, making sure that you add one egg at a time while beating the mixture. Next, add in the apples, syrup, mixed fruit, breadcrumbs, and flour then mix well. Once that's done, place the mixture in the microwavable bowl and cook it at low for 35 minutes. Use a toothpick to test the pudding. If it comes out clear, the pudding is ready. Place a plate on top of the bowl and move it upside down to release the pudding. Fun fact! Sometimes, a silver coin is added to the Christmas pudding mix. Whoever gets the slice with a silver coin is said to have good luck for the coming year. That's all the time we have for this episode. But join us again next time as we give you more tips, more trivia, and more stories behind the food we all love. Be sure to check in next time for another serving of Food Stories.